interested in learning more about communities for a while. I've never been to one before, so I thought this would be a good place to start. It's been really interesting learning about um, how people have started their communities, how they work together to sustain them, and it's been really inspiring to see all of the passion involved in people who want to start them and keep them afloat. So, People are doing some wonderful experiments and how to have a different culture and how to have different relationships with each other and how to have different kinds of businesses and different kinds of living arrangements and being really successful in all these different um, experiments and it's really exciting. Um, I think the most important part of the Communities Conference is for people who have very limited experiences of community to come and see that this is a viable way of living and in many ways uh, superior to what people are doing in the mainstream. Potential communities are groups of people that live together on the basis of explicit common values. Usually that means they control property or a lease together, they may own property, they live together. In most cases that does not mean, that means they share some expenses, but usually the, the members of those communities have their own economies. Uh, my personal belief is that the strongest potential of the communities movement is that communities are experts in how to share things. And if we're in a situation where we're facing peak oil or climate change, then what needs to happen is the people who are in the rich countries in the world need to either consume dramatically less personally, which is a very hard thing to convince them to do, or they need to share things. And what Twin Oaks and Acorn and a number of these other communities have done is they've figured out these robust sharing models that allow them to share cars and clothes and bicycles and buildings and bank accounts and businesses and because they've come up with these flexible agreements they're able to do this successfully and thus they need to work much less hard because they don't have to buy as many of these things and the things that they have are being more fully utilized. What's relevant and really powerful in my view about intentional communities is that we are learning in the intense interwoven lives of community, how to solve problems together, how to, how to actually share things and have that be a good experience, bring us together. The theory of sharing all sounds wonderful, but when it comes down to you both want to use the same thing at the same time and different people take care of a thing differently, how do you solve the problems of that? And I think we're headed to a world where there's going to have to be more sharing because the resource pile is going to diminish and the numbers are not. So that's what's coming ahead, and right now we're trying to figure it out on a volunteer basis, and the skills we are learning, the sophistication of how to cooperate and have that be a good experience, are going to have very broad application. Not because that many more people are going to live in an intentional community, but because we're going to need to know how to share more effectively. I think the strongest part of the community is the idea of sharing, because the core value of my core value is really sharing and that is the, the use of resources. There's so little, little resources on the world. It's a finite set of resources. And the only way we're going to leave stuff, let, leave stuff behind for future generations is not to use what's there. And the best way not to use is to share it. You know, and the idea of Twin Oaks in which we, you know, 93 adults and 16 kids can live on 400 acres of land, live in eight buildings, share 13 cars, uh, share, you know, income which puts us, you know, well, you know, a quarter of the federal poverty level, we're at $6,500 a year per person, and yet live a bougie middle class lifestyle. It's all because we share. And if people can walk away from this and going, wow, I don't need to work at Wall Street. What I need to do is to get together with my common people, find something that makes me feel good, that I can earn, you know, a reasonable amount of money at it, and share and share and grow our own food and then you know and then I don't need to make a million dollars. I don't need a million dollars. I don't need three houses. I don't need a vacation house. It's just people want communities that are uh, very intimate, that are doing uh, emotional, interpersonal growth work, so in some cases spiritual work, and also people are looking for dumpster diving, radical resource reclaiming, scavenging uh, communities, places that are figuring out how to thrive based on reusing the waste of industrial civilization. Well, I think it's uh, vast helping people uh, learn to live together, which is what we all don't do very well on this, on this planet so far. And I think the people who take the time and effort and energy to be part of a community um, learn those skills and, and help foster them and, and maybe make the world hopeful because of that. The electoral process and the voting process and elections in this country are broken.
and aren't working and aren't functional and we need a new system. So I'm actually in favor, I like to use the computer analogy and saying that I'm not actually offering a new software, I'm actually offering a new operating system. So it's a whole, it's, a, it's the difference between Macs and PCs, mm -hmm. you know, voting is PCs and consensus that I teach is Macs, showing my bias. <laughs> And um, it really is a whole other system. It's not voting at all. It's not about voting. It's not about amassing power. It's not about controlling power. It's not about buying power. It's about values. And I now call my model value-based consensus. And the concept is that right now, most groups and most everything we do is based around power. Mm -hmm. And who has the power gets to make the decisions, whether it's the majority in a democratic model or whether it's a dictator because they are the dictator. Um, but in the consensus model, it's about values. And basically the way that works is that you identify your common values and then when a decision comes along to be made, you look at it and you look at the values implicit in that proposal and if it matches the common values, the values you've already identified, then you should do it even if only one person wants to do it because mm -hmm. it matches your values and one person wants to do it. Uh -huh. And if it doesn't match your values and everybody wants to do it, you actually shouldn't do it. Yeah. So it's not about popularity. It's not about winning the vote or maximum number of people or power. It's about the values. And I believe it will work. And I've seen it work. I came here to give a couple of workshops on sociocracy. And what is sociocracy? <laughs> In a few words. In a few, well, standing on one foot. It's also called dynamic governance. And it's a different approach to decision making and governance than what we're used to, where everybody has a voice and things get done. So it, is, it combines, combines the best of both a flat structure and a traditional hierarchical structure. How's that while standing on one foot? That's good. Is it uh, similar to consensus? It, it, the decision making process is, is very similar to consensus, and there's other components as well to get the work done. It began 40 years ago in a business, and it's been used in um, numerous countries well, and lots of, of different organizations, in, including in intentional like communities, and absolutely it works. The big piece for me is communities being a base of operation where individuals or the whole group, if they've got the will, mm -hmm. use that as a springboard to take their personal experience in community and share it with the outside area. It will not be because everybody is going to live in an intentional community. Today we have about 100,000 people in the United States living in intentional community. That only represents three hundredths of one percent. Even with spectacular growth rates, we're never going to be a very significant fraction. That's not the point. The point is, if you ask people if they have enough community in their life, not intentional community, but just sense of community, neighborhood and belonging, I think you'd get a hundred million people who said, no, I'd like more. And we're trying to service that group. They're all like Sierra Club or something, they're all special interest. The whole thing, the beauty of the transition thing is that it's a big tent that everybody can get involved. And you've got to, we're not just talking to people about one specific issue, it's about everything that concerns a community. And it's the community itself that is the key. And one fellow I remember saying that he'd lived in Laguna for seven years and, and he really didn't know anybody in town. All his friends were either in LA or, or San Diego. And then he said, you know, we had a meeting with 60 people at the food group. He said, no, I know all these people I didn't know, know before. Okay, that's the key to the whole thing. That's the, the value of it. What are you passionate about in your life right now? What is consuming your positive life energy at this point in time in your journey in life? And so just so we get a little bit of sharing and get to start to get to know each other. So let's go ahead and just find little groups of three. And I believe that we're all here because we all think that there's some things out in society that, that we want to change. Um, or at least that the most immediate ways for us to live our lives out in society today aren't really what we want and don't really fit with what we believe in. And to engage all of their passions in whatever you're working on. So if somebody's an artist, get them working on the puppets or the banners or whatever, just really engaging the full person in the work that you're doing and and I I think where we fail is that we limit ourselves to a single ideology um, I think sort of like Joe was saying if you're not meeting the needs the real urgent needs of a community if you're just talking about cutting down greenhouse gas emissions you're not talking about so many other things that are connected 
to that problem. Um, and what I found in, in that work, I think some of the most powerful and effective moments for me was when I, I was able, like Joni was talking about earlier, to shut up, listen, check myself, and take on some of the more sort of mundane tasks that are required to build capacity in movements. Um, and that's how we're at our most effective in creating social change. And then I can't underestimate that like, what's effective is being really good at what you do. Um, when people, when you're good at what you do, be that like making seeds or making coffee, people listen to you about everything else. Um, <laughs> right? They're like, oh, you're a worker co-op. Like, damn, this coffee's good. Oh, work, worker cooperatives must work because this coffee's good. And I think for the Occupy movement, it's hard to give sound bites. <laughs> um, but I think a common thread there also for the, the vision would be, would be taking back power. I mean, so the, the fundamental message about communities is that we need each other. Hopefully, hopefully it'll start to spill out into businesses that aren't part of communities and, and more people will be willing to experiment with, um, with creating new types of culture. That's what's important to me is getting, getting people out of old ways of doing things that don't work so well and into you know, figuring out what really does work, what can make a really happy, sustainable life. Been a lot of people putting forth what their what their ideals are, what kind of principles they'd like to see, and it's just been fascinating to think about all the different permutations and different shapes and forms we really can take. But for me, a lot has been a question of cultures of warmth, and I've been staying at, at uh, I've been staying here and realizing I need a lot of warmth. Like, and the people talking about forming community, community are talking about a culture that we very pointedly about caring and so, connection and uh, so that's like um, a small piece but then of course all the so, logistical living you know livelihood so, questions it's, it's been there? exciting and uh, yeah, rich sure. okay. you know, everything has its pros and cons and I love the idea and everything else I think um, I think more people should be attracted to the knowledge of these type of communities because you really gain exposure. Um, I live in Brooklyn now, and there's so much opportunity, you know, living in the big city, and people do want to help each other, but I feel like there's some distance where we're afraid to reach each other, we're afraid to connect on a deeper emotional level, and here I think you see that it's what you need to do if you want to find progress. So there is that difference, and I hope that people who came here who are visiting, we can take that back with us to the places we live and spread that. Uh, I enjoy coming to it. I've come many years. I like meeting people who are living in or looking to form new communities. Connecting with people through the years, I, since I had been part of an intentional, starting an intentional community back in the 90s, some of the people that I started it with come to the conference regularly and I get to see them. And uh, learning about the different things, that different ideas that people bring from one community to another. By camping and staying here, you feel like a, a member, um, just at least for the weekend, which is a pretty cool thing. And uh, probably uh, not many people get to do that. so. It's good. Cool. It can lead to any, many, any number of different things, you know, it can lead to a, a bright, beautiful new tomorrow <laughs> a revolution, or it can lead to absolute failure and misery. <laughs> the, the possibilities are wide open. All right. I learned a lot more this weekend than I thought I would, just talking to various individuals. We need more events, we need more people coming out and asking questions, and we'd be happy to help you know what other people have done and hold your hand while you make the attempt. Okay. If this sounds at all interesting to you, we'll have another Twin Oaks Communities Conference in the fall of 2013. It's con communitiesconference.org. We've had almost 200 people here this year. People seem to have had a fantastic and, in some cases, personally transformative time. Could happen to you, too. Just a really good experience. I recommend it to a lot of uh, other people. Just get out there and get outside the box and, and you know, enjoy yourself. Okay.